In this video, we will be thinking about the previous videos, such as least common denominator and finding equivalent fractions, finding common denominators. We're going to use all that background knowledge to add and subtract fractions. So here are some fraction problems, and the directions are to solve and simplify the following problems. So there's four different problems. Some you'll notice are adding problems, and some are subtraction problems. And it's important to think about when you're solving a fraction problem. Am I adding or am I subtracting? So we'll think about that as we go through these problems. So for the first problem, we're going to set it up. That problem was 5 eighths plus 3 fourths. So your first step is always to write the problem. And what we have here is the t-chart. And there's four different squares. And as you're going through and adding and subtracting your fractions in your notebook, it's going to be really important that you also set it up like this. Because that by setting it up really carefully and organized, you're going to make sure you're getting the problem correct. So after we've written the problem, we're going to move over to this box, find the least common denominator. And we practiced this in a previous video. So our denominators are 8 and 4. We're going to set those over here and start listing out our multiples. And we can see that the matching denominator is 8. So our least common denominator is going to be 8. That's what we're going to end up with with our two equivalent fractions. So just like in the previous video, let's put our fractions, the original fractions, in the first spots here. Then we're going to think about what are we multiplying by to get to that 8. So 8 times 1 gets us to 8. And 5 times 1 gets us to 5. Down in the bottom, how do we get from 4 to 8? We're going to have to multiply by 2. Do the same thing in the numerator. So our two new fractions, like we practiced on the previous video, are 5 eighths and 6 eighths. They have common denominators or denominators that are the same. So now we're able to go and add. So let's rewrite our problem with our new denominators. We have 5 eighths plus 6 eighths. Just like we talked about in the other videos, the whole is always going to stay the same. So with fractions, we're this 8 and 8, we're not going to add those together. The 8 is going to stay the same. Our whole, or the amount we need to make a whole, is always going to stay the same. Here's where the adding part comes in. We are going to add the numerators together. So we're going to do 5 plus 6, which is 11. So our fraction is 11 eighths. We're not done though because it asks us to simplify or reduce. Right now this is an improper fraction. And we've learned in previous videos how to turn an improper fraction into a mixed number. It's simply a division problem. So when we do 11 divided by 8, take the numerator and divide it by the denominator, we're going to, we're going to find out that 8 goes into 11 one time with a remainder of 3. So to turn that into our mixed number we're going to have one whole with 3 left over, over 8, because our denominator never changes. And now we have our final answer for this problem. Write that in our box, 8 fifteenths plus 9 fifteenths. Now sometimes as we're getting used to going through these steps, we forget about the fact that some fractions might already have common denominators. And if that's the case, we get to skip this step because we don't need to find a least common denominator. They already have a common denominator. And we can skip this step as well. We don't have to rewrite the problems. So we're going to take these fractions all the way to our last step, 8 fifteenths plus 9 fifteenths. Our whole is going to stay 15. So we just need to add the numerators. 8 plus 9 is 17. And what we have right now is an improper fraction, so we are going to have to reduce or simplify. We know that to go from an improper to a mixed number, it's just a simple division problem, numerator divided by denominator. So 17 divided by 15. 15 is going to go into 17 one time with 2 left over, and our whole is going to always stay the same. So there's our final answer for this problem.